you, Nikki. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Johnny. Right, okay. So I'll start by introducing myself. Um, please, I, I can see um <laughs> I I can see the chat, so I will please if you have questions as as to, oh, that's the wrong way to go. God, I'm breaking it already. Um if you've got any questions through the whole thing, guys, please interrupt me. Please throw them in throw them in the chat and we'll keep track from there. Okay, so this is me. Um, I am on various social media platforms. I need to get rid of that blue bird and put something else there. Um, I try to put in as Laura GB or something similar. Sometimes the number 68 gets put in there as well as somebody's already nicked Laura GB. I have a blog site, um, Hatful of Data, and I'm, my YouTube channel is called Hatful of Data as well. Um, yes, Terry Pratchett fan. So Hatful of Sky became Hatful of Data. And I am a data platform MVP, massively vocal person. And when I am not um, writing blogs, doing videos, and sometimes doing my job um, for Avanard, I'm a power platform problem solver, I think is my title at the minute. Um, I play board games. And this is one of my favourites at the moment, Galaxy Trucker. If you have any um, kids, probably from about age eight upwards, you need to buy a Christmas present for this is a good one okay so let's get going on this one power platform okay I realize this is not a power platform conference this is a data conference but bear with me power platform's got lots of data in it and this is the slide that Microsoft will show you on regular occurrences showing you all the icons and everything that's in there and and power bi is always over here on the left always over there and for everything else you develop inside Power Platform, we have these things called solutions. And if you're doing solutions properly, that if you're doing development properly in the Power Platform, you use solutions to put things on because then you can export them, you can move them from dev to test, et cetera, et cetera. And it all works. OK, and it's it's, it's one thing they've been working that there are various bits that don't work, by the way, but most of it works beautifully and Power BI wasn't allowed into the party. It, it wasn't in there. But a recent update, like in the last 12 months, it, it's gone through, still in preview at the moment, sadly. Um, they let Power BI into the party. And so you can now add Power BI into Power Platform Solutions. And that's what this session is about, okay? So let's talk about solutions. So what happens is, is you put all your things inside a solution and I'll show you what a solution is in a minute in the demos. And Power BI would be get published off to a, a workspace. It could have been anywhere. And there was some clever way using XRM toolbox to, to embed these things inside your Power Apps and stuff, and uh, inside your model driven apps. And it was hard work. OK. And then when you took your your solution and you moved it into test and prod and all the other layers that, that clients want you to have, UAT, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What you'd do is you'd take the solution and you would export it out as a managed solution. OK, managed solutions can't be edited. So it's going to test. And then when you were happy within test, off it go to prod and everybody would be there. OK, everybody would be happy and there'd be rules about you. You can't edit these. It's it's just makes it all work, okay, how development should happen, okay? But there'd still be this little Power BI report that somehow you had to kind of vaguely point at the right environment to make sure that it was embedded correctly. And it was just a mess. So then Microsoft came up with the method of being able to take a Power BI report and put it into a solution. And what that would do is take this report, put it in that solution. But actually what it did really was make a workspace that matched that environment, put the, the, the report and its data set in there and then put links into that solution. And that's what would happen. And then when you took the solution, you did your export and your import, automated or manual, doesn't matter. Um, you would then end up with a workspace that matches test and a workspace that matches production. Please note, there's not a little lock here and there's not a little lock here. But yes, if you give people access to these, it, to be able to publish to these workspaces, 
they can do that. So you have to be careful. So that has to be done by permissions rather than just by it's locked, it's managed. And so what that means is these two pieces are your working space. So if we have changes to our Power BI report, and if my demos go well today, we will demo this as the last part of the demo, but this is the optional demo as to how well things go, um, is we can make a change to the report, publish it here, and we can see it happen in, in our app and, and be updated there. OK, so this is our working space. And when you export that out, it will update through. Um, if anybody on if anybody in, in the call today is one of those people that does these automations of, of power app solutions going through, please be aware the first time you move it through, you probably can't use your service accounts. You're probably going to have to do it by hand because somebody needs to be able to create these workspaces and service accounts for some weird reason can't. I'm not an ALM expert. I just know my, my ALM experts, how they complain. But that's that's the part that's there. For those of you that aren't those, that don't worry about it. It's it's your ALM people will sort it out for you. OK, so that's what we're going to be demoing today. So it's demo time. So let's move across. Right, so. What we're told, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've lost the chat. Let me just minimize that a second. Yeah, I can see the chat again. Okay, so in here we are in a model driven app. Okay, I've got, it's a really simple one, really, really simple. I've only got two things in here. So I've got a, an accounts. Let's just do a little bit of a zoom in on that. Okay, we've got accounts here. I can go into an account. And we can see parts here and we can see we've got expenses here and we can put in a new expense. So let's go into here and put in um, data. Weekend a party. Obviously, we need one because we're the rowdy channel, apparently. And in there, let's put an expense date of um, today. And let's go and just call it project cost. Let's put other. Oh, well, that's a good idea. And let's put in, it's got to be a decent party. So let's put in 500 pounds. OK, and save and close. And there we are. It's been added in. OK, obviously, I've got the screen wrong slightly because the amount doesn't show. But anyway, it's been added in. Right. So that's that's great. That's great. We like that. If I come to our, I mean, we've, we've, I can show you all the expenses here. They're all listed here. So there we are. We've, we've, we've got down the side here about thirteen hundred twenty pounds. I think that is. I possibly added that wrong. I can't add up. In my, I can't add up that fast. But if I come into Power BI. And I'm going to go to my workspace. And I'm going to go to my expenses. Now, this is a direct report, so it'll take a moment to load. It's thinking about it. It's probably not the fastest in the world, but there we go. So there's, sorry, I, I did the adding up, right. So there we are, there's our expense and there's our 500 pounds that we've just put in there, that other that was in there, okay? So it's a live report. We've got the report built. We've got the app built, okay? And you've got an hour, so I can, so I wasn't going to demo those, but if, if anyone's got any questions in that regard, give me a shout because I can, I can point you in the right directions. So, Behind the scenes, behind a model driven app, these solutions. So let's go and have a look at a solution. So here I am in Power Apps. Um, I've made sure my environment at the top right hand corner here. I'm going to zoom this one in as well, just a little bit. Top right hand corner here, it says Data Weekender. And if I go to, that's my environment. So if I go to solutions, you'll see here. We've got a data weekender solution, which if I go into, we can see we've got a bunch of things in here. We've got a couple of tables, so the account table and the expense table. And we've got a, um, a choice field, that's the type. And we've, we've, we've got these two, um, a site map and the model driven app. That's how model driven apps are put together. OK, so there's our parts. We'll come in and we'll edit some of those parts in a minute. But we haven't got our Power BI report in there yet. OK, but your Pam, but my Power BI report exists. So 
So at the top here, we're going to go to the first part is to add our Power BI report. So we're going to go to add existing. And under analytics, we're going to go to Power BI report. Now, if we've done one before in Dataverse, it will be here. OK, but if I go from Power BI. And I go and choose a workspace. There we are. We're going to go for that expenses. And we're going to click add. So just while that's adding, let me just quickly go back into this part here because it takes a few minutes. But if I go back to my workspace, for those of you are Power BI people, um, you know that they come in two parts. We've got a data set and a report. You can just add a data set um, and, and, and not all the reports and pick which reports you want to add. If you add a report, though, it will add in the data set that's behind it. Wow, it's taking it is taking a few minutes. So what it's got to do behind the scenes is it's got to build a workspace for me and it's got to build and it's got to put the reports in there and then go from there. There we go. Hopefully. Give it a moment. You're going to make me do a refresh. You are going to make me do a refresh, aren't you? Oh, is it there? I think it appeared just as I said I was going to do a refresh. But anyway, so once it's there's a couple of things you need to do. Should not have done that, Laura. There's a couple of things you need to do to make your um, make sure your report behaves. Which demo God didn't I talk to? There we go. Here it comes. So if we look, there's our, our data set at the bottom here and there's our report. OK, we can see that there. They're labeled there. A couple of things we need we need to set up. OK, I'm going to first thing I recommend you do is you go and find your new workspace. So it isn't quite showing there yet. And that's probably because I need to do a refresh here. And I go to my workspaces and there we are. We've got a workspace down here. It's got a little power, a power apps logo. And it's solution data weekender. Now it's it's saying it's automatically um, managed by Power Apps. Okay, and then that's warning you about those things, but it's not totally managed. We need to make sure that we come in here, and I recommend because now and again it just doesn't play ball that we come into our settings, and we just make sure the data source credentials are set up and are working and are happy. OK, I also recommend. That you do a refresh. And just make sure that refresh is going to behave when you publish from Power BI desktop, you get a refresh happen when you do it. This method, it doesn't happen. So some of the generated tables and things like that just don't work. OK, so let's go in and just check that report. Could we go open the report? We can see it. Let's make sure that it's going to behave and there we are. It's it's working fantastic. Great. So I've checked the report has come through fine. Now let's go to our solution. So when you export this solution and import it into a new environment, which is, is how it works, OK, you want this report to point to our new environment. OK, we don't want to have to go in there and change it. So what we do in here. Because you can't, uh, it's, you know, I have to go and fix it. So what you want to do is go in, on our data set. You click on the three dots and we click edit. It doesn't edit it. It opens a pane over here on the right. And literally all you want to do is do you want to connect to, to the target environment? Yes. And then you click save. That's that part done. OK, you've got to make sure you do those parts. If you have external sources inside your report, OK, and you've parameterized it, you can do edit parameters in here. 
and we can come up and click and add parameter. Now, I don't have any parameters, so they're not going to come up. But that's where you'd put it. So. There we are. We So we've done step one. OK, we've done step one that we've got our Power BI report in here. Um, we've got our Power BI report in here and we checked the workspace works. So step two, what I want to do inside my app. Here's my app is I want a new page that just shows my Power BI report. OK. Um, uh, yes, Chris, is the, so, so, so Chris has just asked and, and, and Johnny's doing a brilliant job of answering questions about videos. The other um, the other part in there is um, all, all the things I'm doing here, demos here, are videos on my are on my um, are, are on my YouTube channel as well. So we want to add in that dashboard. So what we're going to do is on the new up here, we're going to go to new and I'm going to go to dashboard. And I'm going to go for Power BI Embedded. And I'm going to call it Expenses Dashboard. And it's a Power BI report. And I can then drop this down. And there we are, it's got my report. And I'm then going to click Save. So now we've got in a minute. This is not refreshing as fast as I'd wanted to. There we go. There now we've got our expenses dashboard, right? So that's that bit done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our app to add it as a page. So we go to our model driven app up here, three dots, and we're going to go to edit. Yeah, Fernando, don't even go down the line of why we call dashboards reports and reports dashboards, and, and, and it all gets very confusing. So we're going to go into here, and I'm going to I'm going to go for a new. No, we're not trying a new look. We're not. We're not sorry, Microsoft. We're not doing that today. And I'm going to come into here. The content type for the page is going to be a dashboard, and then we're going to go next. Sue, I will save that question. I've just seen a question about in there. I'll save that question for the time being. So Power BI dashboards here. I'm going to go for an expense, my expenses dashboard. We're going to make sure it's shown in the navigation and we're going to click add. And there we are, it appears down here. Now this, this navigation can be modified and changed. I can come over here. I can go and pick a little icon for it and go and find things. We're not going to do that today because I'm aware of time. And by the way, the report that comes up is wrong. And you're thinking, that's not my expenses report. But don't worry, we'll fix that in a minute. It's a bug. It's a feature. Right, so we're now going to go save. The things you have to remember in here is to save things. But also, so that's saved it. So when I come back in here, it's there. But if people who are going to run my app, we have to publish it as well. And it's still going to come up wrong. I can, I can, I'm going to kind of think, yeah, it's still it's still coming up wrong. Well, that's fine. That's fine. So we've added our dashboard. It's appearing wrong. Let's see if it's actually going to really appear wrong. I will show you. I'll show you the fix in a minute. I'm just going to do a refresh on my app here. Oh, it's really there we go. And there's my dashboard. So let's pop it in there. And look, the expenses dashboard still comes up wrong. So my cure for this. This is my cure for most things in in Power Platform. Is to do the backup here, and that takes me into my um, my solution. And there is a button at the top here, publish all customizations. And I, I'm not quite sure whether this is a real fix, but it seems to work. 
when I so I I I do this session. I've done this session not only for data conferences but for Power Platform conferences. And when I said this was my solution, the whole room nodded. So I, so I went with the they're they they're the experts. So I'm going to go with this is this is the solution. So this is so this is so I've got three videos that cover this. Um and 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 um. Post um for those who don't like videos, um, blog posts to back them up as well. So this is video two. Um, my my third demo just while waiting this to come through. My third demo is to go to a form and embed the report, but have it filtered, context sensitive to the form that you've put it in. Okay, and that's that's the complicate. That's a slightly more complicated demo. So. Let's go and see if that fixed our app. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close that tab there and I'm just going to rerun it. So we're going to go to our model driven app, close that, and I'm going to press play. And hopefully, demo God's being with us. There we go. That's interesting, that's still a Power BI logo, it's not a Fabric logo. OK, so there we go. We've got our we, we, we've got our parts here. OK, what I'm going to do is I am just going to prove it works. We're going to go back to our accounts and let's go to our. Our parties over here, so there's our data weekend party. We had other. Well, let's put in some more expenses. We want to stay in a hotel, don't we? So data weekend, I'm now getting into typing shorter things. Data with data weekend uh, hotel. Um, and let's pay for that tomorrow. And that's accommodation. And we, we let's put let's put in let's put in one and a half grand because obviously we need more than one person staying. Um, and let's do a save and close. And that's been put into there. Let's put in um, into my expenses dashboard. And there we go. See, it's the, the numbers come up higher and there we are. My November expenses are obviously expensive and I've got a nice big accommodation here. So it's working. OK, so that part works. Right. Let's go and do let's go and do a. Um, let's go and do let's go and do the next part, which is to handle putting that putting that report onto a page. OK. Now, for those of you that don't know Dataverse, OK, if you want to so and, and how model driven apps work, which is part of the difference, by the way. Going, so there's an earlier question from Sue regarding um, the difference between um, model driven apps and Canvas apps. Model driven apps are driven off the definitions inside forms. So if we want to change the way a form looks, we go back to the table and change the forms and the app will update with it. Canvas apps are very much um, making up a, 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 do, a, do a pretty form, but design what you like. Doesn't matter. You can you can be random about it and have all sorts of weird and wacky things in there, and you don't have to change database to do it. So I'm going to go into my account table. Account is one of the standard tables that comes with database. So therefore, when I go to forms here, I've only got one form coming through. It's got a whole bunch of other forms. But I'm only working with the account one, the, the, the account main one. And if I go into that form. I like that description in, in the chat, by the way, sorry, I was pausing while I was waiting, while I was reading chat. Um, I like that description. Um, from um, George has put into into the chat. So here's here's my here's my form, OK, and I could add all sorts of things here. Earlier today, I added in that expenses part. OK, so what we're going to do is I am going to. Add in. So over on the left hand side here, I'll just I'll just, I'll just pause and thinking there are not enough columns there. I was slightly panicking. Um, so at the top here is components. OK, so rather than trying to squash that report onto this page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a one column tab. 
Okay, so there's my new tab. We're going to call it expense report. Okay, and I'm going to put in a Well, it's got a section in it. Don't need to worry about it. it. On that tab, there you are. It's got a section in there. OK. And then what we're going to do is into that section. If I click on that section for a second, we can we can hide labels. We can do all sorts of things, but we can make it so that it works. Now we want to we want to put our Power BI report on there. So I come down to still on components into Power BI. And we're going to go Power BI report and I'm going to drag and I'm going to drop it into that section. And up comes this part here. Now it asks me which report. I've already got one, so it's defaulted to that one. We're going to leave it. We're not going to. There's all the things in here as to whether you've got your action bars, your bookmarks bars, all sorts of lovely things in there. And the JSON string. We're going to come back to that in a second. Because that's 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 the complicated part. And we're going to click done. I'm going to come back and filter it in a sec. I'm just going to prove this works for the time being. And there we are. We've got our report. OK, our report is there, um, but it's not filtered. So what I'm just going to quickly do just to make sure I'm just going to do a save and publish. I save and publish, by the way, so many times that I'm, I'm completely paranoid. When I click on when I click on to that, um, that the, the report that's there over on the right hand side here, I've got a pane here. If you want to edit it at all, you go to components and I click on Power BI report and up comes that pane on this side. OK, I'm going to leave all these things alone in here. There are things for you to go and play with afterwards. But I'm this static value, JSON filter string, and it gives you an I there. Um, there, there, there is a there is a a, um, a PPI JSON filter thing there, but it's a little bit bizarre. So I'm going to go switch back to my um, presentation, and hopefully it's going to give you the next string. So. Here is what I call the magic JSON bit. And here's the JSON laid out properly, well, laid out nicely, right? It's JSON, but it's not JSON. It's JSON embedded inside JSON, but embedded in such a way that these back these backslashes you have to have, okay, to escape the double quotes. So this is as horrible as it is, and this is a very, very simple. We're filtering by the account ID and this part here. So how do we work out these parts, right? Inside Dataverse, which is the light blue stuff, they are the the, the names of the names of columns. Um, that that there's ways of finding that one out. I can show you ways of finding that one out. Um, but that's what that's the part that you need there. With regards to Power BI. Let's go and have a look at our Power BI report because I've got it in this window here. OK, not not updated, but it, this is exactly the same report. And if you look over here on the right hand side, and I realize someone's going to tell me off here that I haven't got um, my zooming in tools loaded. I've got the account table. It starts with a capital A. And I've got account ID is a capital A and a capital ID. Got to have those right, okay? They've got to match what you've got in here, okay? And for those of you who are a bit like me, who like code laid out properly, and um, back at university, I was at university a very long time ago. Don't ask. Um, if you didn't lay code out right, zero marks. So I, I it kind of got drilled into me from thirty years ago. If for those of you that want this, tough luck. You can't have it. I'm going to show you that you can't you can't use this layout when you're putting in your code. So this is where I'm going to the next screen across. This is my my third blog post. OK. 
Uh, this is my third blog post showing you, and there's the, the three steps. And, and I'll explain what step four is going to be. And let's see if we can do it as a demo today. And this shows you all the bits we've done. And there's the magic JSON bit. OK. But slightly more importantly, underneath here is a version of the code, but as one line. OK. And I can I can I can come into here. And press copy code. Right, so there's my, co I've copied my code. Right, let's go back into here. And by the way, um, I've deliberately made my, my, my blog post match my report. I, I'm completely cheating. So click into here and my components. I just closed that pane, didn't I? That was stupid. Come down here and into my static value, we can paste. Okay, and then click done. And we cross our fingers. Right now, it's come up blank. For once, this is what you really, really want. OK, because you want it filtered. And when you are editing a form in Dataverse, OK, what you want it to be is pointing to a, it's not yet saved, it's a blank record. So therefore, the account ID won't match anything in the report. So therefore, it will be blank. So that's right. So now we're going to go save and publish. I'm waiting for something to go wrong. While that's going on, thank you for the. Um, I've just seen Gethin's put into the thing about feedback. Um, I've been a trainer for far too long. Um, as trainers rely on feedback. OK, so if you've got things you think we could do better, please say, because that is how we improve. And that's true for any presenter, by the way. As long as you give constructive feedback, we are more than happy. So I'm going to go back. And we're going to we're going to close that up again because I'm, I'm just going to get the app to reload. And we're going to press play. And let's go into Annabelle's activity parties. OK. And there's my expense report and I'm going to go there. And there we are. It's Annabelle's activities parties. It's been filtered here and there's the two the two parts here. OK, so just to prove that. OK, we're going to go to. Burt's Bakeries. And we're going to go to the expense report. So there we are. We've got our two our two entries here. Oh, by the way, dates showing in dates showing in American format. I've been trying to fix that um, for the past for the hour before this session. I couldn't work out. I, I, I've got it before to fix. You have to do it in edge and I can't I couldn't get edge to do it. But there we are. We've got 520 expenses. So if I go look at the expense report. Because it's a direct query, there we are. There's my 520 and there's my part there. OK, so we've managed to get it so that it works. So. Let's we've managed to get the demos to work and I am ahead of time. I have time to do the next part. OK, so this is the part which. Um, we're going to do a change to the report and push it through. So. What we're going to do is we are going to go to my Power BI report, right? I am going to go back into the um, Power Query. I am going to do a Manage Parameters and I'm going to add a new parameter. And I'm going to call this report version. OK. And it's going to be text. And I am going to call this. It's going to be the data weekend. Uh, one. OK. My apologies. It's going to be called um, 
default because I'm going to change it to that in a second, right? Then I am going to, now this is the part that I always get wrong and, and Sue, who I know is in chat, is going to be crying because I'm going to get this next part wrong. But I'm going to go for blank query. I'm sure it's a better way to do this, by the way. Um, I'm looking forward to somebody telling me. And to put into there that I basically want, I want the value of the report version. And then I'm going to convert that to a table. And I'm going to put that in. The name of that query is going to be Twitter. That is not what I want it to be. I, I have no what I don't want to do. In the source, you have to put an equals, don't you? Yay. And there we are. It says default. Sue so smiling supportively. Right, we got it right. We got it there. And that is going to be called, we're going to call that column version and we're going to make it text. See, I'm doing all the right things. I'm behaving. Right. OK. And then we're going to do close the close and supply. If anybody has a better way of doing that, by the way, in. Oh. Is it going to let me, is it going to play ball? Hopefully. And then what I am going to do is I am going to add a text box. And we're going to add into there a value which is going to be version. Hopefully it's going to behave itself. We're not going to behave ourselves. Twitter version. There we go. It does take time. It, 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 the demo's god, the demo god's lovely. Um, and we'll even, we'll even call these things special names. Um, and then click save. Okay. And I'm going to just to the left of that put in version like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll even pretend we know what we're talking about here. And uh, let's go and put that. I would normally put that in tiny little text somewhere on my on my on my report. OK, so that's all done and it's being driven by that parameter. OK, so done that. We're going to save. That's always a good idea. And then we're going to publish. Today. Did you pick that up? Yeah, you did pick that up. Now, we're not going to publish it back to my workspace because you remember we're making sure that it is. Um, that it is going to un our, our solutions workspace. So solutions data weekender. And we're then going to click select. And we're going to go for a place. OK, so we've put in a parameter into our report and I now want to show how we can populate that parameter from a, a footer on top. Yeah, but I don't just suddenly realise that it's 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 tough. That's where it is. Um, we'll correct it in the video. Um, in, in, in the video that I need to do. Right. So we've done our report. OK, and let's just go back over here. And if we come into here, if we go back, oh, there's multiple expenses open. That's that, that's confusing, isn't it? And we come in to our, our part here and I open the report again. The details. And do this. Stuff. Demigods, here we go. Yep, got it there. Why didn't it play ball? If in doubt, if in doubt, come back in here. And refresh. 
I do a refresh of the visuals. That would have that 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 would that would have that, that would have worked, possibly. Yay! It worked. It was happy. Okay. So that's working. It says default, right? Um, and if we go into our app here, um, let's see if it's working here as well. Possibility it's not going to come through here, but we'll see. I didn't refresh this page, but it hates reloading it. And there we are. We've got version default. OK, so that's all working and we're happy. Let's get back into our solution, right? So now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, we're going to add a new thing into our solution. We're going to go to more and I am going to put in an environment variable. OK, and we're going to call this as our report footer, which is at the top of the report, but never mind. All right. And and. Um, or report version number or whatever we're putting in and put in the details that you expect it, people to be putting in there. OK, and the data type is going to be text. And I'm not going to worry about um, default values and things. We'll, we'll leave that for a second. And I'm going to click save. OK, so then give it a moment and it will appear. Maybe. Um, something just appeared, I'm sure it did. Report footer, so there we go. So if I click on there, let's go and put in a value into there and let's call it version 1.0. Okay, That's the kind of thing that I'm expecting people to put in. So I'm then, or, or a new value. You could have put it into there as well. So I could put a, let's, let's leave a default. Let's leave a default blank. And let's put a new value, V1.0. OK, so I've got environment variable and my report's got a parameter. I now want to connect the two. So we go back to our data set, we click on the three dots and we go edit parameters. And we're going to add a parameter. That's my parameter report version, replace current value. Now I could put custom text in. I don't want to do that. OK. There's two th there's two important parts in here. The, the current environment domain is the path that gets paused, gets pushed into um, in Power Query. So if you're parameterizing your connection inside there, that's one way of doing it. I didn't do it that method purely because I didn't know if I was going to get a chance to demo it. But I'm going to go for environment variable. And then I get to pick my environment variable. OK, and there's a whole bunch in here, by the way. They're all the environment variables that exist in this environment. But I'm going to go for um, report footer. And I'm going to click add. And we're going to go to apps. Into there. I'm worried it's not going to work, by the way. Because and we're going to go to play. I knew I was looking for a P. And uh, let's go to our expenses dashboard. Possibility I did need to go back and do. It's still saying default. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close down that for a second. I'm going to come into here. And if anybody hasn't worked out what the solution to this one is, it's publish all customizations. No, when you export a solution and you import it in, you, you, you export it as managed, you import it as managed. The one thing you are allowed to change is your um, environment variables. That's why you have them. OK, so that, that when, when people are moving things around, so that, sorry, there's a couple of things you can change. Um, the connections that are being used, such as in your flows and things like that, um, and your environment variables. So that's why it's really important that we can pass in an environment variable so that if you've got, let's say, 
um, your Power BI report is pointing to a SharePoint site or a database or, or whatever. Let's go and see if it's now going to work. Um, I keep losing the app because it's far too many things are called the same thing. Everybody cross your fingers and let's see if it's on this one. Not the fastest thing in the world. It's still showing it as default. How bizarre. OK, OK, we're going to go back to uh, we're going to go back to the workspace. If in doubt, the other thing we can do. Is let's go and refresh that. OK, it's. I don't know whether this one will show me the parameter or it won't show me the parameter. I don't think it will. This is why I haven't done this video yet, by the way, guys. Hey, there you are. It is showing it in, in the space. OK, so I've got that one to come through. So now let's go. So I also need to go and refresh the um, the the. The um, data set, OK, so now let's come back into here and let's do a play. Thank you for this, e this evening, Sue. You're a hard taskmaster, Sue. And there we go. Version one's come through. OK, so you can point you can put it in there for um, being able to put uh, uh, your SharePoint path, your database name, um, your database server, all those things that you would want to put in there. You could put in there as a um, environment variable. OK, and your your power platform people will understand the concept of environment variables and how that should work. OK, so. I am. Let's go back. Let's go back to my presentation. So this part here, OK. Is making these more complicated if you so a, a real simple filter, OK, in here is being able to find out this part here, OK, is the part I haven't shown you. So I'm just going to take you back to that and just show you where I got that from. OK, so if I go back into my um, my solution. And I go to my table. Go onto the accounts table. And I go to columns. It's not going to show because I haven't edited that. Let me take you back to solutions. My apologies. Let me take you back. My apologies. It's not showing there. Apologies. Because I haven't edited that table, the columns haven't come into my solution. OK, but if I go outside of my solutions, right, you will see under tables. You will see all the standard tables that come through. If I click on to account here. You shouldn't make changes here. You can, but you shouldn't. And I go to columns here. You can see in here. Here are all my columns. OK. Now, what you need to be aware here is here is my account. And annoyingly, it shows you with cases here. But if I actually go and click on that column. It's not going to show it to me. They've changed it. It's showing you the internal name here, but what you need to do is put it all in lowercase. OK. I am going to have to fix my blog post because it just says come here and have a look. OK, I will fix that, but it should be in lowercase and you will see through here all of them are the names in here. There's underscores on some of them. There'll be a prefix and you need to work out what those are going to be. OK. So in order to find out this part, you need to talk to your dataverse people and this part is your Power BI report builder, whichever of those you are. OK, so 
those of you that are data people and know the Power BI CAT team, OK, this is the member of the Power BI CAT team that knows how to spell dynamics and knows what Dataverse is. Um, and Scott is amazing. Scott is the, one of the one of the loveliest people I know. The, the whole cat team are, are fantastic, but he's the one that knows what Dynamics is. And he came from the Dynamics team. And Dynamics, for those of you that are going, oh, Laurie, you mentioned Dataverse and Dynamics. Dynamics is a lot of businesses run on it. Uh, it's a CRM system. It's a sales system. It's all sorts of things for, 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 for companies. And the Dataverse part of Dynamics is just one big model driven app. If you ever want to upset, if you ever want to upset Dynamics people, remind them of that. But it is just one big model driven app. Very complicated and, and fantastic, but that's what it is. Scott, here's his, um, um, his Twitter. I think he is on Blue Sky as well and possibly on Threads. Here is his LinkedIn. He will accept connection requests um, and him and I have presented together on, on, what, on what we're looking at today um, and, and, and we are always in touch and, and, and um, talking to each other about what we're presenting etc so please feel free to reach out to him okay um, I think the only slide I've got left is my resources and I will make sure these slides are available okay but I am going to go back to answer. I am going to quickly. Oh, Fabric Cat now. Yeah, they're, they're not Power BI Cats. I perhaps, perhaps need to update my, my, my slides here. Um, OK. Apologi apologies to, to I see somebody came in 15 minutes late. Apologies. Um, can I have, a, have a look through these, these, these three videos. They will uh, hopefully get you to understand. But I'm going to confuse everybody just for a moment because I realise, and I'm going to go back to Sue's question, what's the difference between a Canvas app and a model-driven app? Um, and I'm just going to quickly go and answer that because I think I've still got eight minutes. Um, by the way, if anybody needs to, uh, if anybody's got any extra questions, please. Yeah, you've got, you've got eight minutes. You got loads of time. I've got eight minutes. This, this is really unusual for me, Johnny. I normally over I normally overrun and have to speed up. Okay, so what I'm going to come back into here is I'm going to come back into here and I'm just going to answer Sue's question. So, what's the difference between a Canvas app and a model-driven app? So, model-driven apps are. Let's come back into my solution here. Um, this is a model-driven app. Okay. So it's got nice little pages. Um, when I come in here, I can it, it asks me what it asks me easy questions. So if I wanted to add into here a new page, pointing at a new table, I could quite quickly, easily let me go. Let me go in to my solution. Solution. Let's get back to the solutions. We're not in a solution there. Let's get back to this page here. My apologies into our solution. My data weekend a solution. So if I come in here and I go to this model driven app, um, so let's, let's make it really simple. Let's go for a brand new app, app, and I go model driven. Let me show you what this is going to look like. As soon as you come in here, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. If I know I'm ahead of time, but system, please. Did I click on it? There we go. I can give it so um, a model driven. This is an app for Sue. And we're going to click create. And it's instant reaction. It's, its first question is, what do you want to what, what pages do you want to add? What what tables are going to be in here? OK, so if we were going for they don't care about the account, they don't care about the accounts. They just want to see the expenses. OK, if wow this is not this is not going fast um it's asking me well, what page do i want so i am going to add a page and we're just going to go for a dataverse table and i'm going to go next and it asks me what would i like it asks me for all the things in here so i could let's say well let's go for let's add some contacts um and 
let's put in an expense table, etc. And all these things we can do. I can then click add. And there we are. They're in. OK, and I could immediately press play. Save and continue. I can immediately come into here and I could go on to my contacts. You're not playing. Why aren't you playing? There we go. On to my contacts and I can go new and you see it's already got my form in there so I can put in. Um, my cursor's not working today. I could put in that we've got two bays and I can go save and close. And it's all there, hunky dory. It's been defined, and there are my expenses from earlier. And we 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 can go and add a new one. Uh, and it's all working, okay. And that's all been defined, and that's nice, quick, easy. I can build you an app in two minutes, right? Um, when I come to when I come to going from here. OK, so let's go back into my solution. So now let's talk about using a Canvas app. Um, and I'm going to go for app and I'm going to go for a Canvas app. OK. Uh, I went for existing, didn't I? That was silly. I'm going to go for new this time. And I'm going to go for app and I'm going to go for a Canvas app. And I'm going to um, let's call this Canvas. And again, Sue. Um, and I'm going to go for tablet. And off it goes and it thinks about things for a bit. Wow. Um, maybe they're doing updates over a weekend. Who would think? And there you are. It's saying, um, what, do you want to do? Do you want to do some? Do you want to do some things in here? Um, do you want to it's, it's, start building an app from blank or, or create a form, create a gallery, um, but you have to go and build them, OK? Come on, system. But in here, just because I, I, my, my seven minutes has been eaten. So if I go to here, there is no data added. So I need to go and add data so I could go in and add an account. OK? Um, but there aren't any default forms or anything yet added in there. So I could then come into here and I can go, well, do you know what? Give me a um, give me a. Um, a vertical gallery. And let's put accounts in there. And there you are. It's it'll give you the basic building blocks, but I could come in here. I can resize this. I can make this all pretty etc but that button there doesn't do anything unless i tell it so that button there doesn't do anything it's not got any it just selects the parent you've got to go in and do all the code but you can make it incredibly customized incredibly um what you want it to be okay um so therefore you can put those in okay and fernando's put up um um, a link there to Shane Young. OK, Shane Young is the. So for those of you that know Guy in a Cube, OK, and that's where we send everybody for beginners version of Power BI and 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 on through to more advanced topics. Shane Young is the equivalent for um, for Power Apps as also um, the other person I would add in there is Matthew Devaney. OK, he doesn't do YouTube. He does blog posts. So between the two of them, they cover a huge amount. So when it comes to the other question, and I realise I've only got one minute left. The other question that Sue put in there about can I add a SharePoint list? So SharePoint list, if you want to bring them into a app, that's going to have to be a Canvas app because model driven apps are only dealing with. Oh, look, there's Copilot. Um, I sorry, can Model driven apps are only dealing with Dataverse, OK, unless you're going to. And in Dataverse, you can bring in some external data as virtual tables, but you can't bring in SharePoint that way. So if you're dealing with if you're dealing with SharePoint, you're talking Canvas apps. You're not talking model driven apps. OK. 
Um, I am going to come back into my part here. And I'm going to come down here and thank you. Any questions? See, look, Johnny, I finished on time. Kind of. <laughs> it's no, it's, it's gone past on mine. It does. <laughs>